We'll be using a flint knife set into, into an antler handle bound with pine resin and beeswax pitch glue and I'm going to use that to, to um, just modify the end of the shaft into a point. It's pretty clear that this knife is quite capable of um, achieving taking this to a point but as with all prehistoric things with this technique alone it's going to take some time. So what we're going to do is we're going to employ a flint adz. So this is a section of flint bound onto an, an anchor point of a piece of wood. Obviously this is the main beam of the tree and this is a branch coming off. So we've flattened the top off and bound that down. So we'll give that a go. Because it's not polished, as well as cutting, it's tearing a little bit. But that's not a, um, it's not a problem. So now that we've got this narrowed down slightly, what we're going to do is we're going to come on to the second, um, the second uh, thought of how to process this end and um, basically all we're going to do is we're going to beat it. We're not going to go crazy on it, we're just going to slowly pound it and open all them fibres up. My end result is hoping to mimic what could be described as a wooden, wooden paintbrush. In the past, my attempts to do this on hazel have been successful, and on this ash, it's just fallen apart. So, um, quite obviously, I can't use that technique um, with this timber, which is fine. It's, an, it's always about the experiments rather than the successes, and um, so this will have to find another job for this, and um, we'll get a piece of hazel and we'll have a go at that. turning it as we go. It doesn't hurt to have a, a rock underneath it. It's a little bit harder and uh, you get a better, better return for your efforts. It's starting to go quite nicely now. I know this seems like a strange thing to do to the end of a stick, but it really is. Um, in my experience a great way of putting the spearhead into the end of this section because we can just remove what we don't want, soak the rest of it in a, in a uh, hot pitch and um, bind it on, let it go cold and it'll be a really good fixing. You'll always lose a little bit when you're beating it like this but don't worry about it too much. See how we go. Just wiggle it a little bit. Have a look to see if you feel that you've got it evenly 
set. I think I can probably bring it over just a little bit. Like I say, you'll get a few bits which generally don't belong in there anymore. And you can also trim the front end of this down a little bit. So that you've got a smoother point where it actually meets where the wood runs out. And then we'll also look in from the end and see how she's looking. So I believe now that if we get a nice pot of pitch bubbling away to put that stick in, that that's going to be a great home for that spearhead to be returned to. What we have here is a fallow deer skin, which um, I'm just keeping soaked at the moment. We've um, removed the hair and, and left the grain on it um, just by soaking. It gets a little bit smelly, but um, this is going to, we're, we're actually cutting this down into nice thin straps, and this is excellent for binding something like a spearhead on. Cut through the soaked leather I'm going to use a um, flint blade again as you can see it's got no problems dealing with this and you can also see how thick this material is and how excellent it's going to be for the binding. Cuts through it real ease that's an extraordinarily it's about three sixteenth of an inch thick and four millimeters thick for those who are metric We already know where we want this spear tip to go in, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the soaked deer, deer skin and hold the tab there and then pass that through that slot and pull that back and down. Just check that that hasn't got in the way of dropping it. <coughs> and that will tie itself in rather nicely. So we've only got to think about locking this off rather than messing around afterwards. Our pine pitch glue is now all evenly um, warmed through. So what we're going to do is start introducing this stick into it. I describe this as a type of beehive binding where the binding naturally gets wider as you go up to incorporate the width of the spearhead. What's great about this rawhide is as it dries it's going to shrink down around the head and then the final bit we'll just tuck that in and use our knife Push that down in behind there. And then we'll cut away the surface. So the final thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use this long glow stick 
I'm just going to paste over the top of these uh, of the raw of the um, soaked deer leather. I keep going to say rawhide, but it's not actually rawhide until it's dried. That's good. And I'll go around the front of that, so it's locking everything onto the front of, end of that spear shaft. Cross over the back where the um, deer hide finishes, and then just wander around. Now, one thing to watch out for is we've got um, heat and flint, and uh, if the flint is allowed to get too hot, it will do what it does, which will mean it goes bang, blow apart. You've got a fair range that you can go on, pretty soon learn it if you push it it's too far. Okay, so the final thing I'm going to do with that is I'm going to lose a bit of that. I'm going to take it steady as I go, let that drip a bit. And now we're just going to let that all set off. Keep it turning as it dries and it stops all the glue running to one side. Then we can cut off these little runs. So that's the technique I like to use for binding a spearhead onto a flint spearhead onto a piece of wood.